السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على أفضل الخلق أجمعين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His entire household We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them, all his companions And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every single one of us And grant us goodness Beloved brothers and sisters in Islam We all should realize and understand the importance of knowledge Because as our children grow up and perhaps when we grow up as well Parents sometimes when they speak of knowledge they think it means going to school and studying from grade one perhaps into university not realizing that that is only a small portion of knowledge that will only take you through a fraction of your existence whereas what is of utmost importance is the knowledge of your maker the knowledge of your religion the knowledge of the path that you are to follow the knowledge of where you are, where you were, where you are heading, and where you will eternally be. That is extremely important. And this is why we say the environment around us plays a very big role in making our minds up. Many people don't realize their minds are made up by the environment, by people they mix up with, by people who are their friends. And laziness creeps in sometimes when it comes to Islamic knowledge. The reason we say this is because there are so many opportunities for us to learn the knowledge of Islam that we miss. And actually they are far easier and sometimes shorter, smaller slots at very convenient times which we actually do not even take advantage of. And we don't realize the reward of it when the hadith speaks of a person who goes out to seek knowledge. Do you know what it says? The Prophet ﷺ says, مَنْ سَلَكَ طَرِيقًا يَلْتَمِسُ فِيهِ عِلْمًا سَهَّلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ بِهِ طَرِيقًا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ The Prophet ﷺ says, whoever treads a path to seek knowledge. I want to stop there for a moment before we go and make mention of what is the virtue of it. This would mean anyone who is making any form of effort to get to any place where they will have any form of increase of Islamic knowledge. This is what is meant. So if you are going to walk to the masjid where there is a two minute program or three minute program and you are telling yourself, I want to arrive early so that I can get one hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa you are included in this hadith. If you are a person who makes use, for example, in our community, in this masjid, of a program on a Monday evening, for example, whereby you would be, in fact, it's a Wednesday evening, where you would be learning some form of jurisprudence, a few rules and regulations, not more than 20 minutes, that are related to you and your life on a Wednesday evening after Salatul Isha. So if you were to leave home early for Isha, and say, I am going to the masjid, I will read salah, and I am going to sit there and learn something for 20 minutes, and I will be back slightly later. You are included in this hadith, because you are treading a path in order to seek knowledge. If, for example, you arrive on a Friday early, in order to listen to some of the ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and some of the verses of the Qur'an, you would definitely be included also from amongst those whom not only attended the Friday and got a reward for it, but also from amongst those who made it their business to tread a path in order to seek some form of knowledge. So when we listen to the hadith, whoever treads a path in order to seek knowledge, immediately what comes to our minds is those who go to a full-time school in order to learn the deen. Yes, they are part of it. But you and I have every opportunity every day to be a part of it. If you tread a path to seek knowledge, even if it means one verse, when the hadith says, بَلِّغُوا عَنِّي وَلَوْ آيَةً Convey from me, even if it means one verse. That means the value of one verse is great. It is knowledge. It is something that has changed the lives of so many people who hated Islam. Take a look at Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu anh. Take a look at Najashi. Take a look at so many other examples. Uh, this Al-Qadi Iyad, rahimahullah, and the examples that we have 
of the lives of the predecessors who were affected by one verse of the Quran. So it shows if you make an effort to, to go out to learn even a single verse, what will happen to you? Man salaka tariqan yaltamisu fi ilman. Whoever treads a path where he is sending out feelers for knowledge, it's worded so lightly. It means that anyone who is going to get even a small portion of that knowledge. Sahalallahu lahu bihi tariqan ila jannah. Allah makes easy for him through that effort of his the pathway to paradise. Imagine what a powerful narration. You want to learn something, Allah says, by the mere interest that you have in your heart, the mere thirst that you have within you of seeking the knowledge, and you did something small about it, Allah says, that alone we will ensure that it makes your path to paradise easier. In every sense it will. So we have an opportunity every day in this masjid, for example, before Salatul Maghrib, one hadith, ulama present and something is read in front of the, the uh, musallis who come three minutes before the adhan of Maghrib. Imagine if you were to attend every day, why is it that a, the path to paradise will be made easy for you? Can I tell you why? Because the words will pierce through to your heart at least at some point. When you make an effort to achieve something, you value it. If you get something without an effort, no one values it. Today, if we were to dish out booklets for free, Yes, people might, you know, make use of it, but they won't value it as much as if they paid $100 to get the book. They would say, hey, watch this book. You know, I need it. I paid for it. I will read it. You know, they say the newspaper in Zimbabwe, those who buy it for the dollar or two dollars that it costs, depending on which paper uh, you actually buy, they read every single page, every corner of it. When I asked one brother, why are you wasting so much time? He says, hey, I paid for this thing. I don't want it to go as a waste. Imagine that's the mentality of the general masses. What about us? You make an effort to come early. You make an effort to attend a program. You come early for Salatul Maghrib. You have a three minute hadith. That three minute can move your life. You will learn a hadith that might shake you. So what will happen? Your entry into paradise is made easy. Definitely. Physically, spiritually, in every way. The same applies. If you were, for example, to make an effort to come on a Wednesday evening, at the moment we are speaking of Janaza, and we are going through, this week we will have practicals where one of the brothers has volunteered uh, really to be enshrouded to show people how it's done. What will happen? You attend one and you see how it will lure you to the next one and the next. Because when you see someone being enshrouded, and when you see that this is what's going to happen to me, and when you learn about janaza and about salah, and about nikah, and about talaq, and about uh, you know, buying and selling, and so on, and the rules and regulations, you purify the method of buying and selling. You purify, for example, your dealings at home. So you have a beautiful life, and you are developing a link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And immediately you begin to worry about your grave. Because the hadith teaches us, increase the remembrance of that item which will destroy all your worldly lusts and desires. What is that? Death. Think about it every day. When we are reading salah, the hadith says, Salli salata muwadda'in. Read your salah. Every time you read your salah, as though it is going to be your last opportunity to read salah. Imagine, if that is the case, and I am supposed to be thinking about it at every salah, this might be my last salah. Wow, subhanallah, I will be a person who will be conscious of my maker. Do you really think I will be a person who is going to go around usurping and the rights of others and wronging them in some way or another or swearing and so on? No, because I know I just fulfilled the salah. It may just be my last salah. I read it properly. I pronounced the words correctly. I took my time in ruku. I came up from ruku. I stood properly. I went to sujood. I came up from sujood. I was relaxed. I was in a calm atmosphere, bearing in mind my last chance. The problem with us, we are not reminded enough for us to be able to do that. Subhanallah. So we dart through the salah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So this is the virtue, the slight virtue of a little bit of knowledge that we would be able to seek. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ has spoken about the virtue of a knowledgeable person in comparison to the one who does not have knowledge. And no ordinary worshipper. فَضْلُ الْعَالِمِ عَلَى الْعَابِدِ كَفَضْلِ الْقَمَرِ عَلَى سَائِرِ الْكَوَاكِبِ According to one narration, the virtue of a person who has knowledge 
over a general worshipper who does not have that knowledge is like the virtue of the moon over the rest of the stars. Why? Because this one knows. Why can we not become someone who can actually increase our knowledge when it is being served to us on a regular basis? We do have, mashallah, CDs that are available. We do have DVDs that are available. We do have so much that is available to us. All you have to do, put it in your vehicle and play it whilst you are driving around. And you will find your knowledge increase. Make sure it is something beneficial, legitimate and authentic. Some people prefer to have a music CD. They, they think I will get sued while I'm driving because there are so many potholes I get stressed. The reality is the biggest pothole, you will be buried in it. May Allah protect us. What about that? Will that soothe you from that? What will soothe you from that is when you listen to what Allah has to say. When you listen to what the grave is all about. When you understand what the akhirah is all about. And when are you going to get that? My brothers, we are wealthy enough. We have a lot. We have been given food and we are clothed. We have a country where if you throw a seed by mistake on the ground, it will grow. That is how fertile the soil is. So we are not going to die of hunger. Yes, we may have our education, PhDs and what have you. But ask yourself, what have I now done to prepare for the day that I'm definitely going to go into that grave of mine, meet my maker. I have no option but to have hope in his mercy. What have I done for that day? I'm going to meet Allah. مَا مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا سَيُكَلِّمُهُ رَبُّهُ لَيْسَ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهُ تُرْجُمَانِ Do you know the meaning of that hadith? It is that none of you, meaning every single one of you, shall be meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and speaking to Him without a translator or a middleman in order to explain things. You talk to Him directly. To do what? To answer for your deeds. Allah says, I'm going to talk to you. You will speak to your Maker. Seeing Allah is a gift of the people of paradise. But speaking to him, you have to answer to Allah. The hadith speaks of the clarity of seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very, very clear. You won't be mistaken. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a gift for the believers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. There is a dua. The Prophet says, أَسْأَلُكَ لَذَّةَ النَّظَرِ إِلَىٰ وَجْهِكَ I seek. From you, the sweetness of looking at you. When I actually look at you, Ya Allah, grant me that, that day that I can achieve that sweetness of looking at you. Wallahi, we should be thinking about it. Today, when you see a beautiful car, beautiful house, beautiful person, beautiful this, beautiful that, beautiful watch, beautiful phone, people start thinking, wow, look at this. Hang on, these are all creatures. They are nothing. Believe me, they don't even qualify to enter paradise because we know about them. But imagine when you are meeting the Creator who made you and me and everything that is beautiful and paradise. In order to look forward to that, you need to learn something about it. Where will you learn about paradise and hell? People say, well, we'll attend the Friday talk. To be honest with you, the Friday talk is too short. It's just a small dose. It is not long enough. You need to make a bigger effort. What have you done to increase your knowledge? We've always said Islam is a knowledge-based religion. The more you know, the more you will love it. The less you know, the further you will drift away and you feel like there is something wrong. Why? Because you did not make an effort. How can you say, I'm a Muslim? Then you don't want to learn. Knowledge is what will save you. This is why Allah says, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ Those who truly fear Allah are those who have knowledge of who is Allah and where am I, who am I? And what is happening, the, the, the knowledgeable are the ones who can fear Allah. When you don't know who is Allah, you, you, you actually don't even know how to treat Him and how to look up to Him and how to worship Him. If, for example, a man passed and I said, you know, brothers, this is the president of Maldives and he walked past. If you did not know, you may just... You know, by the way, but now at least you know who he is. You have a bit of respect. That is a small example of the dunya. We don't even know Allah and he made us. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Yet every day there are short lessons. Not asking for too much. Conveniently placed for your own convenience, for your sake. So that you can come five minutes before Maghrib. And you can sit down. Wallahi, you will hear a powerful hadith. Powerful. And when the hadith affects you in your life, you must thank Allah. Don't say, this man is attacking me. No, Allah has sent me a message to tell me something. The best speech is that which hits out at you in such a way that you feel the man is talking to me. That's the best speech. 
The worst speech is that which is a tale of something not related to you in any way. So you hear of how someone dreamt and how someone did this and that and it did not help you in any way. That is the worst. The best is that which pierces straight. It is a message. Allah knows you were seated today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. He knows we are here and we are saying things. So this is why today I have chosen this day, really, to encourage myself and yourselves to do more to study. Al-ilmu bahrun la sahila la. Knowledge is an ocean that has no coast. You swim and swim forever. You will keep on learning and you will keep on learning for as long as you want to learn and for as long as you are living. So let us improve our knowledge. What comes with knowledge? Let me explain. With knowledge comes the action <coughs> on the knowledge. You act upon it. What's the point of knowing so much? Let me give you an example of the world. You are a mathematician. You know all the equations. But when it comes to application, you're doing something else. And then someone tells you, but why didn't you use the equation that you knew? You say, no, I was just trying something else. But you knew the equation. You were a top student. That's what we do sometimes. What happens? We have knowledge. We piled it up, but we didn't act upon it. Al-amal. To act upon that knowledge. So we know all the equations and we know x plus y equals z and whatever else. But what happens is, application is not there. It's just knowledge in formula and in theory. What's the point of that? When you learn something, you practice it. What is the benefit of practicing? Allah opens the door of another piece of knowledge. That is the, that is the benefit. If I learned one thing and I practice it, what will happen? Automatically, it will lead me to another thing. When you <laughs> practice on something, you've opened its door. When you open its door, you get to another door. Allahu Akbar. This is the beauty of Islam. This is why we are taught that knowledge will come with practice. And there is a third duty after you practice to convey it, to tell someone. Going back to that hadith I said, Balligu anni walaw ayah. You know, there is a longer hadith where the Prophet ﷺ says, Whoever hears my statement, memorizes it thoroughly, and passes it on to others. And exactly how they heard it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant them goodness, protect them and safeguard them and so many different virtues of that person. Because you need to say to yourself, I have a candle in my hand. Without that candle being lit, it is a man with no knowledge. Once I've lit the candle, it's a man with a little bit of knowledge. Now that I've lit the candle, I see many other candles. How many? Can I light before I leave the world? That is your duty. So one is to have a candle. Two is to make an effort to light it through knowledge. And here we say, you can attend a three minute to start with. That's only the beginning. You can attend a Wednesday night. Thursday evening at the school, we have a program for men and women. Straight after Salatul Isha for one solid hour. On a Friday, we have a tafsir at the Ridgeview Masjid. In the evening after Salatul Isha. On a Sunday, we have a program of tafsir for the sisters at the Ridgeview Madrasa that is there between 11 and 12 o'clock. You need to know this. You need to make an effort. You need to encourage others. Because when you encourage others, you get a reward for it. A person who shows someone goodness is equivalent in reward to the one who did it. How beautiful is that? So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst those who do not become oblivious. We don't want a day to come where death is at our door knocking and we tell ourselves, Ya Asafa, you know, we are regretting so badly. Lo, behold, what I did was actually a waste. I amassed so much, it did not help me at all. I have so much money, I have houses, I have this, I have that, and yet it didn't help me and I lost track. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. May we not be from amongst those who lose track. I have spoken quite a bit. I have given you a short synopsis of uh, some of the importance of knowledge and I have also informed you of the programs we have in this particular masjid and with the programs that the qualified ulama are actually engaged in and I'm sure you would find many other ways of seeking knowledge like we said the CDs available various other programs you may want to attend and so on you may want to listen to as well we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who can learn put into practice convey to others so that we can complete the entire circle and be true followers of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad